What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is Supergirl Season 2, Episode 7, The Darkest Place. So, ultimately this episode was a lot better than the last couple weeks, because frankly the last couple weeks was all focused on just stupid relationship, bullcrap drama going on. I mean, half of last week's episode, half of it was about Alex coming out because she likes Maggie, and then the other half was about Kara and... Um, What's his face? Monel, like their little relationship taking a down downturn, and oh no, now they don't get along, and oh, maybe this means they won't get together. And then by the end of this one, of course, Monel's like, "Does Kara have a mate?" And I'm just like, "Oh my god!" Like, ah, uh, who gives a crap? Like seriously, I don't care. Like that—that's the thing about this episode. Overall, a lot better. Because the main focus was on Cadmus, was on the White Martian, and was on interesting stuff. Supergirl stuff. Not the bullcrap, oh, you know, oh no, Maggie doesn't like Alex back. Oh no, what's going to happen there? Oh my gosh. And the other, Monel, oh no, like, he and Carr finally, they, they finally started giving each other that look today. Oh my gosh. Like, that, that gets too much focus in the show. And even though it was focused on a lot less in this episode, there are still moments where it feels like it just comes out of nowhere. You know, like, we're having a moment where stuff, really bad stuff is going on with Kara at Cadmus. Like, they just, I can't, I think this was just after they had captured her. And so, it's like, holy crap, she's captured. What are they going to do now? Cut to Alex and Maggie are talking, and then Alex, like, blows up on Maggie because, oh, I thought maybe you liked me back, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, who cares? Who cares? Kara is over at Cadmus, captured right now. I want more of that. So, even though this episode really took a lot of the focus off of the relationship stuff, it's still interrupting the plot way too much. It's still... We're in an intense moment. Something intense just happened. Cut to, oh, what's going on with Maggie and Alex? Oh, what's happening with Kara and, and Monel? I mean, they're they're in cages, captured, and they start having this conversation like they're clearly they're clearly hooking up. You know, like the the music gets all romantic and stuff. I'm like, are you serious? We're in the worst possible place right now for a moment like this, and you're gonna start playing that music. So, all in all. That was the biggest frustration for me, is just too much interrupting going on as far as all the relationship stuff. So let's talk about the good stuff. First of all, the Jimmy stuff was a bit more interesting this this episode. It still, I feel like, is just, I don't understand it. I still don't get the whole, oh, why, why does Jimmy even have to be a vigilante? Why does he have to have this purpose? You know, Wayne clearly said a few episodes ago, you can be a hero but not out in the field. You can be a hero behind a computer or, you know, helping Kara in other ways. You don't have to be out there fighting. Two episodes later, he's out there fighting. You know, it just he's pretty much become a vigilante. He's got a name. He's constantly fighting bad guys. He's even got another vigilante that he's got to stop this episode, and that's his story. The only thing that makes it somewhat interesting is that we see Alex is clearly like not okay with this. But the problem with that is, you know, even though she reacts how she should, you know, are you guys serious? All in all, she still doesn't say anything about it. She still doesn't stop them. She still doesn't tell Kara that this is what they're doing. She just says, are you guys serious? And then helps them get out of the situation and then that's it. If Kara knew what was going on, she would like pretty much tie Jimmy down, lock him up, do something to make sure he couldn't go out there and fight because there's no way she'd be okay with this. And I'm sure at some point she's going to find out and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it was you, and be completely fine with it because this show is stupid like that. But I don't know. Like the fight scenes, anybody feel Arrow-esque going on right now? Like it just, watching these fight scenes, I'm just like, I feel like I'm watching an episode of Arrow. You know, the fight scenes are great, but... That's not what I expect on an episode of Supergirl. I expect this on Arrow. Why do you feel the need to copy Arrow? It's not even that good right now. What are you doing? Um, so anyway, that that part of it was not as good as the rest of it, but it was still more interesting than it has been the past couple weeks. The stuff with 
uh, the, the White Martian and John Johns. That's getting somewhat interesting. I still am confused as to why she was pretending to be a Green Martian at first anyway, because it's not like, you know, it, it would have made more sense if, like, she, I, I don't know, because she was, she was pretending to be a Green Martian even at the, the fight ring when John John wasn't there. When she first revealed herself to John John, she pretended to be a Green Martian. It was like, okay, I can understand that. But why did you pretend to be a Green Martian elsewhere? Like, why why pretend to be a Green Martian at all unless it's around the last Martian? So, that part confuses me, but the emotion is really there in this episode. I mean, we see Jean is clearly dealing with some side effects. It turns out that apparently getting injected with White Martian blood turns him into a White Martian. So, that's an interesting storyline. I, I don't know where they're going with it. We leave on a note that like, he transforms his hand and it becomes a White Martian hand. So... Yeah, I don't know where they're going with that. I guess we'll see if he is going to turn into a White Martian or if he'll figure out how to stop from being a White Martian. But that's interesting. Um, I love the fight scene between them because you can really see that Jean is clearly in emotional pain because of what happened to his family. And so you can see he's fighting. He's He wants to kill this White Martian to get revenge, even though she had nothing to do with the death of his his kind you know she clearly says i was trying to help them escape he still wants to kill her in the thought of she's a white martian she should die so very interesting to see that um i'm curious to see where they're going to take it from here also going on is obviously cadmus and all this stuff there really probably the best part about the season so far because first of all we see hank henshaw it, well first of all we we think it's john john's at first because <clears throat> Monel tries to escape, and then all of a sudden they bring they bring John in and like are beating him down. It's like we have your friend. And he's just like go back to your cell now. And then all of a sudden they cut to John at the at the DEO. It's like wait a minute, how is he? What's going on? Like I was confused. I was like, did they get a did they get a robot? <laughs> Foreshadowing. Did they did they get another Martian to pretend to be him? Like what what is happening? Well, Kara gets a call from Cadmus on her way to track down Guardian after the police get a call about him. Um, Cadmus invites her in. She comes in. There's John Johns. And it's not John Johns. It's actually Hank Henshaw. Like, the Hank Henshaw. And all of, like, everybody was talking about in the first season whenever Hank Henshaw got introduced. Hank Henshaw in the comics is, like, Cyborg Superman, I think is what, he, is what he's called. And so everybody's like, is that what he is? Like, the glowing red eyes, is is he supposed to be Cyborg Superman? And then whenever it turned out to be Martian Manhunter, they were like, holy crap, that's awesome. Well, this Hank Henshaw, sure enough, is Cyborg Superman. He, They're fighting, they're fighting. She uses her laser vision, lasers off half of his face, and the Cyborg part, part of him gets introduced. And he's just like, I'm Cyborg Superman. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, the fact that they brought him back... The fact that they brought Hank Henshaw back into the show, made him Cyborg Superman, it's a good twist. It's well it's well crafted into the story. I think it's brilliant to bring him in. Gives the DEO somebody to fight against Supergirl and mon and John Jones that is actually power enough, powerful enough to stand up to him. So I love that twist. It was a nice little holy crap moment. And then of course after that, you know, they capture Supergirl. They take away her, her powers by u making her use her laser vision. Um, when she doesn't have her powers, they take some, some of her blood, which we see later, Jean, or Hank Henshaw, uses her blood to get into the, um, the whatever it's called, Fortress of Solitude. I can't believe I forgot the name of it. So he uses her blood to get into the Fortress of Solitude, asks about a Project Medusa. I can't remember what that is. I think they talked about it before. So, yeah, all of that, I mean, that was a, a great little story to follow. Her getting out of uh, Cadmus involves Jeremiah showing up and helping them out. Uh, ends up getting a bullet out of mon -El's leg to, to save his life. So, kind of a question of, is he really... I don't know why I'm tired, but I, I keep wanting to yawn. I, I don't know why. <sighs> The question is, is Jeremiah working for Cadmus, or is he 
prisoner there who happened to escape in this one moment, or is he pretending to work there? A lot of questions there, but Kara does tell Alex, you know, Jeremiah is alive. He helped me escape. So Alex now knows it's confirmed. He is alive. He is still there. Um, I don't know where that's going. Of course, like I said earlier, that all gets cut off. Like she's talking to Alex about it in the apartment or in the DEO and they, they talk about it a bit more in the apartment and then all of a sudden it gets cut off by all of this like friend stuff and they're just like, hey, we brought you some food and blah, blah. And all of a sudden Maggie shows up and Alex goes out and talks to her for a minute and then come back in and she's just like, I just, I don't know what to do about her. And then Kara brings it back to the topic it's supposed to be about. And it's like, I promise we'll find Jeremiah. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like, for the first time in a long time, the plot is actually taken away from the stupid relationship stuff. Um, so all in all, I mean, it was a good episode. Still have those moments that make me want to facepalm because they're frustrating. I don't want to watch Soap Opera Girl again like I did the first season. I want more about Supergirl. I want more about her being a superhero, her trying to adjust to this life of, I'm Cara Danvers, I've got a new job, a new boss, but I'm also Supergirl. When's the last time we've seen her interact with her boss, her new boss? It's been a while, you know, because it's been so focused on, she's Supergirl, and there's Maggie and Alex, and there's Jimmy and uh, Guardian, then there's Cara and mon -El. That's been all the focus. We've hardly had time to focus on what's part of being a superhero. Having a secret identity. Let's see some more of that. You know, let's see some more of Kara having to be Kara. That's that's interesting. I want to see more of that. Not more of, oh, is Kara and Monel going to get together this time? It's stupid. So, yeah. That's what I think about this episode. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you like and dislike about this episode? Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to future Supergirl reviews. I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.